welcome to the international news channel at TAC TV. I'm your host, Halima Sadia. Joining us today is Sara Singh. She is the deputy leader of the Ontario New Democratic Party. She has a PhD in policy studies from Toronto Metropolitan University and a Master's of Arts in International Development Studies. Additionally, she is the founding director of Boarding Horizons, the boarding director at Community Living Ontario and was the vice president of Brampton Caledon Community Living. Thank you for joining us today, Sarah. So provincial elections are coming so quick and uh, how would you see them in comparison of 2018? How is the campaign going on since there had been a lot of changes during that time too? Absolutely. Um, you know, in 2018, we made history winning in the riding of Brampton Center with just 89 extra votes. And we had strangers who have become friends now that helped us on those campaign. And that energy was electric and exciting. So, you know, here in 2020, we're looking forward to building on that momentum from 2018 and the work that I've done over the last four years um, and connecting with the community so that I can get back to Queen's Park. You know, when I'm door knocking, I hear from uh, folks in Brampton Centre that they know we've worked hard. They've seen the passion and the integrity in, in the service that I have brought to our community. And so they want to see me back at Queen's Park as soon as we can. So let's talk about what kind of policies and programs have you brought which you think that Ontarians right now need and you offer them to be as NDP party. Well, you know, the NDP, we have fought uh, very hard over the last four years to do things like increase the health care services in the community of Brampton. You know, I'm proud that we have tabled opposition motions um, to call on the government to fund another hospital, full service hospital for the city of Brampton. Something we need, you know, um, even before I got into politics, I would hear from community members who were very worried that they were waiting hours and hours on end in our one hospital in order to get the emergency emergency services they need. So the NDP, we have committed to not only getting another hospital for Brampton, but fighting to get us a third hospital. Um, and I'm really excited by that. And I know one of the last things I was able to do in the legislature was also fight for a standalone cancer care center in the city of Brampton. And that was actually a successful motion. So I'm looking forward to seeing this cancer care center come to our community because I know that the need is there. You know, in 2017, I lost my older brother to cancer and we would have to leave Brampton and go to Toronto or Mississauga in order to get the health care and cancer care that he needed. It shouldn't be like that for families here in Ontario or in Brampton that you have to leave your community to get the health care services you need. And we're going to see those cancer care rates double, cancer rates, sorry, double uh, in, on, uh, in Brampton in particular uh, over the next decade or so. And so having a cancer care center means that people will get the services they need. But we also fought for things like more affordable housing. Um, you know, the region appeal is growing very quickly. The city of Brampton is, is growing growing um, very rapidly, um, but we don't see those investments in our housing services and emergency housing as well. Um, so we fought to make sure that municipalities like the region of Peel would get the supports that they need to build the housing that residents deserve. Another thing that I'm really proud of is, you know, the NDP, um, even before the last election, um, we fought to lower auto insurance rates for drivers across uh, the city of Brampton, but also across Ontario. And that's something we're going to keep fighting for. Um, and, you know, I think we've done so much work over the last four years to hold this government to account and to demand better. And I know that voters across Ontario see that, they hear it, and they know that we're strong, we're ready, and we'll keep working for them. So you guys had been a long critics, opposition for long-term care plans. So what do you think you are so far doing to help for that kind of issues? You know, long-term care uh, was in crisis in our province. Um, we know that under the Liberals um, and Conservatives before that, uh, massive privatization in our long-term care homes meant that public dollars were actually not being reinvested into care. Um, and unfortunately, when the pandemic happened in 2020, we saw the impacts of a system in crisis in our long-term care homes where nearly 4,000 seniors and staff 
lost their lives in those homes. You know, the NDP has long been calling for reforms in our long-term care system. Um, you know, I know that my colleagues have tabled legislation uh, such as the Time to Care Act, which would have provided a minimum standard of care in those long-term care homes um, for four hours of direct hands-on care. Um, we also have called on the government and we have proposed as well to remove the profit from long-term care. Right now, we know that corporations such as Chartwells are making millions of dollars um, for their private shareholders and not reinvesting our public dollars into the care that people and seniors and vulnerable residents deserve. Um, so we want to fix that. We also want to hire more staff, more PSWs, more nurses to work in those long-term care homes. You know, many of those staff members are working sometimes two to three jobs with without benefits, without sick pay, uh, in order to make ends meet. We believe that caregiving can be a good quality job. And so we're committed to making sure that we provide full-time positions in long-term care homes so that you know staff are not required to work through agencies or piece together multiple contracts. But a very important part of this equation is not just about investing in long-term care. It's actually about finding ways to help people age in place in their communities. And it is possible. We know that there are models in other countries, for example, that create smaller village-like settings for elders in our community to be able to stay in their communities but also by investing in our home care system making sure that families can keep their elders at home with the right supports you know whether that's assisting with daily living changing uh, whatever it is that seniors may need so that they aren't forced to go into long-term care when they're not ready or simply because the supports are Sorry, not there. I will interrupt here okay. so long term is basically when you your your medical facilities are not available at home or when your medical facilities are not available with the kind of collective like uh, old home system you're talking about the other countries have that kind of a system if you're looking forward to so how the whole system comes again towards the uh, healthcare system you know so do you think that we are capable we are better now or we are deteriorating or what it's been a long political issue for a long time I'm observing about that. Absolutely it is I mean the long-term care system is a part of health care because a big part of the challenge too is that we do have seniors who are not receiving appropriate care um, who may end up taking up a hospital bed because there are no other options so long-term care um, is a almost last resort for many people um, you know many people experience Alzheimer's, dementia, and you know, that is a progressive disease that can have multiple impacts on not only the person, but their caregivers around them. Mm -hmm. And so for many families, you know, they're unable to provide the level of care that is needed for, for, for an aging community member. Um, and that's why they end up in long-term care, or they may have underlying health conditions that require them to have 24 hours support, for example. But what we are proposing and what again, many other models have demonstrated, is if we invest in supports like home care, that means that elders or people with disabilities um, are able to get the care they need in their homes. So they're not occupying a, a hospital bed or they're not occupying a long-term care bed. They're actually at home in a familiar setting with people who love them and want to care for them. Um, and so that's why we're proposing over a billion dollars worth of investments in the home care system. One, we can create good jobs for folks like our, our nurses and PSWs, but we can also save the system money by not taking up space in other healthcare facilities. So that's why we understand it is about community-based care um, and creating these models of care that people can rely on and that will be there. You know, many caregivers share with us that they are complementing all of the care services for, for their vulnerable family member. You know, whether that's taking time off work themselves, um, sometimes, you know, burning themselves out in order to provide care. It's not a sustainable system, and that's why we're proposing to fix it, not only by providing those supports, but also taking care of the caregivers who help uh, take care of our vulnerable seniors and people with disabilities. So we have talked a lot about the flaws of the system we are seeing. So what, as a politician, you see the weaknesses of your opponents and how you think your party is going to address when they are going to be into the parliament? 
Absolutely. You know, I know that the cost of living is top of mind for so many families here in Ontario and in my community of Brampton. You know, when it comes to things like reducing auto insurance premiums or the cost of hydro, we know that the Conservative government made commitments in 2018 but truly failed to deliver. You know, for most people, they've actually seen their auto insurance premiums increase over the last four years. Um, that's why today I'm excited that we announced uh, as the NDP that we were going to help fix that broken system by ensuring that we would look at methods to reform the auto insurance system, similar to what other provinces have done, but also uh, reduce premiums by up to 40% for drivers in our communities. This is a huge savings for people. I don't think that the other parties are taking the cost of living issue very seriously for folks. Um, you know, the Liberals, they actually sold off Hydro One. Um, and that's what caused much of our rates to increase um, when a private company purchased Hydro One. Um, and now we see that rates continue to rise. Conservatives, again, in 2018 campaigned on reducing things like the hydro rates. They did nothing. Same thing with the auto insurance file. You know, Liberals promised a 15% reduction. Uh, it was a bit of a stretch goal for them. They never delivered on that in 15 years of governing in this province. And the Conservatives had four years to deliver on that promise. They didn't. Those are things the NDP understands are impacting the, the cost of living and daily life for people in Ontario and my community of Brampton. That's why I'm excited that we're doing something different. You know, we also understand the importance of investing in education, for example, and creating smaller class sizes. That's something we've been fighting for, um, for for a very long time because we understand that the quality of education uh, is being impacted when we have larger classes, when we don't have enough educators in the classroom. That's why even during the pandemic, we called on the government to cap class sizes um, to ensure that there weren't you know, 30, 40 plus students in a classroom, not only to protect the students, but to protect the educators who also have families of their own. Um, and that's a commitment we've made and will continue to fight for, something that I don't think the other parties are really taking seriously. You know, with the Liberals, they closed schools here in Ontario. And Conservatives, they have cut out of our education system and, and not kept up with the rate of inflation in terms of the investments that we need as well. So that's resulted in fewer teachers, uh, more students in a classroom, and that has a detrimental impact. So I think when we think of the future and the future economy that we want to build, it really does start with a strong foundation in investing in education and preparing the future generation to take on those jobs of tomorrow. Just a few things that I'm really proud of, you know, and I think the last thing that I can share with you, because there's so much that we're doing that is different. It's an endless talk. It is, it is, it is but you know, there's so much that's broken in Ontario it. that we need to fix, but you know, one of the last things that I'm really excited about is our housing plan. Um, you know, anyone that you talk to is concerned about the cost of housing, whether it's your mortgage, whether it's rental, um, and that's why, you know, not just during an election, actually two years ago, we released a housing platform um, to help address the housing crisis here in Ontario and actually take it seriously by building the housing that we need to you know fill in the gaps um, of affordable housing and that missing middle housing that we need for middle income earners but also doing things like rent control to help stop the rents from going up and help renters save for a down payment on their first home and in our homes in Ontario plan we also have the homes in Ontario program which actually would provide an equity line loan uh, to first-time home buyers uh, to help them cover the cost of that down payment and get access to the market. These are smart policy decisions that will help, you know, cool the market, help create accessibility when it comes to housing, but also ensure that that human right is realized for everyone across our province. You have been involved in local advocacy, so what do you think, it, why do you think it is important to do so for you? Absolutely. You know, before I got into politics, I was actually very involved in my local community. It's one of the reasons that I actually did get involved uh, and, uh, you know, uh, am now at the MPP in the area. So I started off working in, in the grassroots um, organizing sector. I founded a nonprofit organization with my sisters, um, and we were doing arts based social justice work. And, you know, connecting with the community is really, I think, the foundation for any of the work that you would like to do. I think you need to understand the issues 
issues. You need to understand your community and you need to be able to fight for what matters for them. And that's really where I started. Um, and, you know, then I was encouraged to consider a career in politics. Um, but I think, you know, when you start off on the ground, you really are connected to your community in a very different way. Um, you know, I was working with different groups, for example, whether it was arts organizations, uh, Community Living Ontario to help people with disabilities, um, and different seniors groups as well all concerned about elements of our health care system in Brampton. You know, I was also born and raised in Brampton, so that helps give me a, a very different perspective yes. on when, how... When you're, when you're into your own community, you have the all details. Absolutely. What are the flaws and what how you, how you anticipate to see forward to correct them, you know? Absolutely, and I think it gives you a very different perspective because, you know, Brampton has changed over the last 37 years. Um, you know, my grandparents bought their first home in Brampton. It's a very different community um, now. And so having that understanding and the, the knowledge of how our community has changed informs my advocacy in, in many different ways. Um, you know, I say to people, I was born in 1985 at the one hospital that Brampton had, which was Peel Memorial. You know, we fast forward to 2022, Brampton still only has one hospital. Um, you know, 37 years, we've grown to a city of almost 700,000 people. It's unfair for our community to not have the health care services we need. Um, so growing up there, I saw that because, you know, not only did our community experience this, I also experienced those long waits with my own family. And that's kind of what encouraged me um, and motivated me to fight for things like health care services in Brampton. So I think when you come from a grassroots organizing background one you understand the community two you want to fight from a genuine place um, of making things better um, and that's what inspires me to keep this work up so that is the inspiration behind all your political career so do you think politics is a career or politics is the kind of making difference in the society what is your personal take on that you know I think uh, politics and being a politician is all about being a, uh, a, a public servant right and you're serving your community um, I think that that has to be your foundation and your guiding principle is about how to make things better and how to fight for the people that you represent um, you know I'm really proud of the work that we have done uh, over the last four years um, because I truly do believe that I've listened to my community and that I have brought their voices to Queen's Park and fought for things that matter to them. Um, I don't know what my journey has in store for me, um, but I hope that it is a long career in politics uh, to continue to be the voice of Brampton Centre, uh, but also to, you know, explore what options are good for us. Uh, you know, I think uh, for me, I have a background in uh, policy studies, recently completed my doctorate in policy studies at X University. And, you know, for me, I think bringing this academic experience along with my lived experience and the advocacy, um, I hope will translate to a, a long career as their local representative. But I'm open to all options. I think for me, it's always about making a difference. That's why we started the nonprofit, um, was to make a difference in the lives of young people, to take action on social justice issues in our community, and to, to make and, and be that change um, as well. And so, you know, I think we can do that in many different ways and that's what I'm always going to be committed to for the people of Brampton. So as we see the politics, especially the po politics of Ontario, it is very difficult because there are so many layers of the generations who are in politics to enter into politics. So what pushed you and what helped you? What was the reason? I mean, these are the little, little, little tips you can give to the younger generation because I feel like the young blood is too much needed to give the perspective of today's life. So what is your take on that? Absolutely. You know, I think when we think of the need for young people to get into politics, that's really what inspired me. Um, again, you know, coming from a community advocacy perspective, uh, growing up in my community, I understood that we were not receiving our fair share. Um, and of course, people encouraged me, um, especially as a young woman of color, um, to take up uh, some space uh, politically and to be their voice at Queen's Park. I could not have done it on my own. Uh, you know, at the time when I was making my decision uh, whether or not I was going to run, I was also a teaching assistant at the university uh, with Stephen Lewis, um, the Honorable Stephen Lewis, and uh, he was a big part of, of my decision, but also my family. Um, you know, my parents uh, really supported and encouraged me to take my advocacy to another level, along with many of the groups that I was working with, um, you know, who would say, you are a strong voice. Um, have you ever considered 
considered and you know I did not consider it I was not a young person who thought oh you know politics is a career for me I was really in the academics and the grassroots organizing side of things um, but once I saw leaders like Jagmeet Singh as well and how they were trying to change the face of politics. This really encouraged me to realize that I could also um, be a part of that change um, and how important it was for young people, um, for us to advocate for our communities. You know, I always say to young people, if we're not around those tables, if we're not speaking up and standing up for our community, other people are making decisions on our behalf. So I always encourage young people to know that their voice matters. Um, they should be uh, advocates for issues that matter to them and it is possible um, you know at any stage of your life to consider a career in politics what you need to do is love your community and want to stand up for them that's really the prere prerequisite to, to be a politician or to be a local representative you have to be willing to fight and you have to be willing to stay connected and and you know love your community so let's come again to the point that what would you like to tell your voters or request them or say to them regarding upcoming elections. Absolutely. Um, you know, I'd like to say to everyone in Brampton Centre, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity over the last four years to be your member of Provincial Parliament at Queen's Park. I know that I have fought hard for things like our, our hospital and healthcare services, as well as to help reduce the cost of living for uh, folks in Brampton. So I hope that I can count on your vote again to keep that work up and fight for our community to lower things like our auto insurance and make sure that we get another hospital and a standalone cancer care center. And to anyone watching, if you're interested in getting involved and helping us out on our campaign, we would love to have your support. You can come down to our community campaign office, which is located at 50 Kennedy Road South. That's at Kennedy and Clarence in Brampton. Uh, there's so many young and amazing volunteers who are energized to help us win again. And we can't do it without the support of your community. So come on out, help us out, and let's keep fighting here in Brampton Centre. And I'm looking forward to winning again and being your voice at Queen's Park. I wish you good luck for thank your you. elections. And thank you for being with us in our studio today and discuss and talk about your mandate, your party's mandate to the people who are watching us. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks to the viewers at home for tuning in. This has been your host Halima Sadia and you're watching the international news channel at TAC TV. Like, subscribe and make sure to hit the bell notification button so that you don't miss any of our future videos.